before before we discuss the manuscript Oh, yes. you go. Why don't you? Yes. Uh, so why don't you go to the website, use the code, and why don't you vote regarding the manuscript? Which which section was most problematic? Can we choose two? Choose yeah. One. I'm sorry. I, I want to choose two. We got six. No, I chose one, but but I want to choose two. All right. Very good. So, uh, uh, one person thought all sections, including the discussion sections. Okay. Very good. Uh, and. Uh, All right, so now, what is your decision? Would you accept? I don't think so. Minor revisions, major revisions, or reject? Three major, okay. I cannot disagree with those two um, answers. Let's uh, <laughs> dig into the um, paper. Uh, having said this, I think um, our job as a reviewer is is see if uh, if there's anything that we could suggest. In terms of improvements, our job is to try to salvage a paper. If it has any any um, redeeming qualities whatsoever, okay, that's our job as um, as reviewers. That's also our job as uh, members of the IRB. Our job is to make research better not to reject, um, and uh, if, if possible. So let's uh, review this manuscript, uh, both on its merits of um, uh, organization, scientific writing, and also critical thinking. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I, I got this manuscript in my email request to review a manuscript last Friday and it just like uh, fell into my lap, perfect timing. And I think, uh, I think it's been a good exercise. Um, so having said that, let me, um, let's see. Let me pull up the manuscript. All right, there we go. Um, so, okay. all right, so let's, um, we're gonna take this um, section by section. And I, I made some markings on, on my um, version, so I'll, I'll refer to that. Uh, let's see. All right, so give me some um, uh, general comments. Uh, can I say? Hi. Uh, yes. I think uh, it, there, there was no background about the research. It was just about, you know, Tuskegee syphilis study, you know, the history of medical ethics, the codes. 
and uh, I was reading till page three, I think. I still didn't get any of the background about uh, research ethics committees in Oman and Jordani universities, uh, I mean, research ethics committees. And uh, I didn't get what they are just doing, you know? And uh, yeah, that, that's my comment for the introduction on the first page. Okay, um, so uh, you, I meant to go over this and you reminded me. So the most important thing before reviewing a manuscript is to um, is to look at the title. So you have a, uh, and also uh, the abstract, but more importantly, the title, because everyone has to put on their video if, if you're able to with the bandwidth. Come on guys, you, you know the rules. I, I know you guys were hiding yourselves from Isabel. I, I noticed that, okay? But not with me, all right? I gotta see you, sorry, okay? Especially the last session. So anyway, so uh, uh, look at the title. I found it non-relevant. What, what's non-relevant? The title? They they like talked in, in two paragraphs, the, the, the introduction. Okay, right. They didn't talk about the, the challenges too much, but they mentioned too many reasons for having the ethical committee, uh, right. the rules of the ethical committee, how do they okay. accept or reject. It's not relevant to, to the challenges. Okay, all right, so here's the title, Perceptions of Challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. uh, affecting members at, at Omani and Jordanian universities. Uh, so it's all about challenges, okay? Good topic, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a, a good research problem, all right? Um, now, as we go through this paper, uh, the other thing that goes through my mind uh, is, uh, why, why these two um, countries? Yeah, for me it was the same. Yeah. Why, why? I mean, because why? it was more talked about Jordanian than Omani. Right. Yeah. Right. It was all about Jordanian committees and members. Yeah. So um, I, I, I don't. I mean, so what's up with Oman? I mean, it's uh, uh, so uh, so we have to keep that in the in the back of uh, our mind why why did they choose these two in fact that would be uh one of the comments one would write as a reviewer what's the justification for omani and jordanian because uh, they are uh, okay. obviously two vastly different countries both from the Middle East, um, but having said that, you know, what's up with that? But uh, so, okay, so that's the title. Uh, they said 18, but I think it was five, I think it was 15 and three, right? Yes. Right, like, why, why, why bother? No, uh, uh, my apologies to Oman, but why? Why bother? Okay. Anyway, so uh, all right. So let's um, back to the introduction. I I agree with you. The, I mean, the first two paragraphs were were a fluff. It had nothing to do about the um, topic at hand. And I think according to the outline that Isabel gave you was, um, what's the three things you want to accomplish 
in the introduction. The aim of what was known, what's unknown. What's oh, okay, what's right. Known? right. I mean, right. Uh, what's known, right? And uh, what else? The aim of the study. Gap. What's the and the gap. The third part, right? Uh, and our plan. Part. What's that? Our plan, our scope of what we are going to do. Well, that's the aim, right? Yeah, and then, and then, what's the gap? So, actually, uh, let's see now. Uh, all right. Uh, with it, uh, I have it here. Uh, oh, yeah, right. So, this is this is where they really start talking about the subject at hand. Uh, along the way of working. Now, um, I'm going to try to dismiss, though I'll bring it up anyway, the choice of phrase. Uh, uh, I think that the, um, the writer of this article does not have a, a good command of the English language, but I'm going to try to, you know, uh, not be uh, um, influenced by that and uh, I look mainly at the content and the uh, critical thinking, the um, uh, how, how, how the manuscripts uh, flowers, flows, but uh, along the way, I don't know where may that's... I ask? May I ask? How, how should the language and the grammar affect our decision about the manuscript? Um, well, if uh, minimal, minimal, usually the editor will ask, "Does this need um, uh, English editing?" Okay, and uh, uh, and they have the editors. If it's a good research, important results, they'll. They'll fix that up, okay? Um, so I, I try not to um, uh, be influenced very much by the uh, uh, grammar. So, so while reviewing, I should not comment uh, on the unclear language? Uh, well, towards the end, you could say it needs English uh, editing, okay? But, I mean, for this manuscript, if you're gonna start uh, commenting on 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 the grammar and choice of phrases, your, uh, for this paper, your your review would probably take up five pages, and uh, so don't um, you know what can I say? Don't don't waste your time with that. Okay, all right. We, got more important things to do. Okay, so uh, might meet challenges that could affect their responsibilities. I, I think that's, uh, that's uh, except for the choice of phrases, that's a, a good statement. Uh, uh, meet, meet the uh, challenges. Uh, so, but it, it it comes at the end of a paragraph. Mm. Uh, well, uh, let me take that back. That's not too bad uh, that it comes at the end of the paragraph, but it, it, uh, the paragraph itself, uh, it, it doesn't build up to that sentence. The content of this paragraph uh, doesn't uh, justify it's that sentence, uh, right? Because they uh, now uh, also look at these two pa two first paragraphs, the really long paragraphs, and uh, uh, so um, uh, I think there might have been a better way to introduce the subject. Okay, so having said that, what, so now, now he finally, he finally uh, 
uh, finally starts talking about the subject at hand. So what about the last two paragraphs? I really like about him that he was organized to list all the responsibility for the research ethics committee. Well, uh, wait, what is that? Uh, uh, where, uh, where did he do that? Yes, he said the major role of the research ethics committee can be summarized in the following responsibility. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, like um, page two, yeah, starting no, from I, line I 35. I thought we just uh, discounted the first two paragraphs as being irrelevant. We are on page yeah, it's three. Nice. So it's nice to know the responsibilities, but how is that relevant to this paper? I think maybe he didn't explain it very well. He was trying to explain that these are the responsibilities that they have in the research ethics committee that we have in Oman and Jordan. Okay. Well, how, how is that he wasn't to very strong in his language. How is that related to challenges? Uh, because uh, it's it's showing the gap. After that, he's going to speak about the gaps that they have. Like by the end, he said no, that no, no, no. we have problems. Okay. Good, good question. What What is the gap? Maybe. Um, the guy was uh, the challenge uh, facing the, the yes. uh, uh, REC in Oman and Jordan. This is the gap. Now, what do you mean by that? I mean that we do not have enough uh, studies uh, or maybe no studies at all to know the challenges facing the REC uh, in these universities. Okay, all right, good. Yeah, right. It. That's, that's the gap, the challenges. <laughs> Not yeah, the, he mentioned. Not the, not the, uh, not the. Uh, not the rule of the RIC. Yeah, not yeah, the we, role of we the RIC. We know the responsibilities, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he mentioned the gaps in page three, starting from like line fourteen. He starts saying all the challenges that he had. Okay, where where does he start mentioning that? The RIC the last two paragraphs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Line numbers. Give me line. Uh, line line for line fourteen. Seven. Page three. Seven. Page three. Line seven. Page three. Starting from. Page well, aren't we on page three? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Page three, line thirteen. Line what? Thirteen. Okay. Thirteen. From another angle, members of RECs reported several challenges, encompassing but not limited to. And then one start two, mentioning. Three, four, five, yeah. He mentioned like seven reasons. Okay, right, right. Okay, yes, yeah, right. That's when he starts um, talking about uh, uh, well, I mean, he could have started with this um, and uh, uh, and, and then, you know, get rid of this and then say, okay, have reported several challenges, okay? And uh, uh, so now, I, I don't know uh, that uh, now these papers being quoted uh, are from, this one is from I think Poland or Latvia, something like that. Uh, so they're all from non-Arab countries, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is what we know from other countries. In the Arab region, there is a paucity of studies, okay? Uh, but they didn't yeah. mention any reference for that. That's right, exactly, right. Mm -hmm. No references, all right? And uh, mm -hmm. now, in the discussion section, uh, he does uh, uh, mention one from, from Lebanon, all right? Uh, now, uh, having said that, uh, I take that statement and the lack of references very personally, 
because uh, this <laughs> you have reference have in the Middle East. <laughs> uh, what? Where are the papers from the Marine? <laughs> Maybe that's one of the challenges. I mean, come on! Oh, this is the major one. They did not do a good literature search. Okay. Right. They had yeah. one from Turkey as well. Well, right. Well, I, I, I don't uh, consider that from the Middle East. Um, now, uh, now the editor uh, is a, a a good colleague of mine, and. He knows of my program from the Middle East, and that's why he chose me to review this paper. And, um, um, but having said that, there's nothing from Moretti, and what could I say? Uh, uh, now, uh, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna take that personally, but I will tell him what other papers he should be reading, or he or she should be looking at for, for the challenges. But you're right, a paucity, uh, which is actually a good word, paucity, uh, mm -hmm. since we've been talking about word choices, but there's no references. Um, okay. Uh, why am I using purple here? Okay. All right. Well, maybe it's not too bad. Um, so, uh, all right. So that's that's the gap, right? Uh, which investigate challenges and uh, and hence the aim. Uh, now, at at this point, uh, he could have listed. A few of the challenges that were um, have been mentioned in the other studies. Uh, I mean, just you know, a few sentences. So we got paragraph one, two, and then here's the three. The aim of the current study—that's unnecessary word, current. Okay, we. Uh, uh, we know it's not the future study, it's not the past study, right? So unnecessary words uh, was to assess this issue. Which issue? Guide, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying care. to figure out which issue. <laughs> I, I do not like um, unspecified this is and that's. Okay? Uh, this issue from the perspective of faculty members who are serving or served in RECs in Oman and Jordan. So that's the aim or the objective. Okay, all right, so. Uh, and they didn't mention any, any comparison between the two countries. Oh, yes. Well, now, so now, again, why, why two countries? Uh, well, uh, not, well, we'll get back to the issue of challenges, but um, uh, it's not necessary to compare. But he, 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 he uh, wrote in the methodology, in the design that he's yes, right. and, and he never did compare. Yeah. Um, no. But uh, uh, I think they compared and think. <laughs> no, they just ignored Oman. <laughs> They just talk <laughs> about right, Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> but right. even, yeah, the sample was not equal and I mean, the number it, of universities. Yeah, you could do work in different countries mm. and uh, it's not necessary to compare. Uh, you could um, also. Should they? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Let me finish. Uh, okay. Also, when you start comparing, you have to be careful about privacy of countries uh, mm. because you don't want to um, uh, make one country look worse than mm. the other country. Okay. Mm. I mean, you did uh, one time. I did a comparison of RECs from India, South Africa, and Egypt. Mm. And but I kept 
I kept the groups anonymous, and I compared between between the three countries, but I kept it anonymous. Okay, uh, um, but it's it's hard to compare when you have three versus fifteen, right? Uh, yes. But, well, yeah. well, I mean, you already picked up that he did say he or she uh, did say uh, they were going to compare, but they never did in the results section. Okay. All yeah, right. So good. My question, my question was, should they like give a justification for this in the methodology section, for example? Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, I think in the methodology mm -hmm. uh, of why they're picking those two somewhere along the mm -hmm. along the line. It it could have been in the uh, introduction section mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. but or even the discussion section. But somewhere mm -hmm. along the line. There should be mention of why those two countries. Now, it could be. Um, what was it? I uh, think it was purposefully. Well, yeah, purposefully. I got it. I got in, intention. I got the impression. Well, what that do you mean by purposefully? I I got the impression that they by the end of their project, uh, they they realized that they didn't have good findings from Oman. That's why they. They talk more about Jordani, so the Jordanian. That's because maybe because they didn't want to, you know, point the negative or the lack of other uh, issues in right. Oman. So uh, I think that the most likely reason why they picked Oman and Jordan is because the authors are from Oman and Jordan. Yes. But the method mm. here in the design said that it's a comparative study. So it should have comparison between mm. the two Okay. Well, why don't we move on from 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 that issue for for now? Um, okay, so all right, we we get to the uh, methods. Methods. All right, so design. What do you think about um, That that line. I, I think about about. Uh, com What's that? There is no comparison. No comparison, and it, it doesn't need to be compared to be compared. Well, what do you mean there's no comparison? It's a cross-sectional study. Okay, cross-sectional study. I mean, this is the first time. They mentioned comparative, all right. Um, yeah. Active tense or passive tense? Passive. Passive. It's conducted. Okay, it's, it's passive. Um, but I maintain you could have just said a comparative cross sectional study. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Now, having said that, what kind of cross-sectional study? They should mention survey or questionnaire. Yes. Mm. Right, a absolutely. Uh, uh, I had no idea what kind of study it was. Mm. Um, mm. Cross-sectional um, survey study. Class, mm. that's it, right? Very mm. simple, okay. Inclusion criteria, uh, any issues with this? There's no exclusion criteria. Uh, they didn't mention. Do you need exclusion criteria? Not necessarily. Um, I don't know. What exclusion criteria would you, would you want to have seen? Anybody under 18? No. <laughs> agriculture? What's that? Like uh, faculty of agriculture or college of agriculture? What do you mean by culture? 
That's just agriculture. Who are you going to exclude? He included so only those people, those colleges. So, so I. I'm sorry. It's like when you say when you uh, when you include, for example, you you include uh, ages under ten. You don't need to exclude those above 10. Uh, right, yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this really, that's not. Now, in a uh, clinical trial, the inclusion criteria includes uh, people who has the specific disease under investigation, okay? Uh, the exclusion criteria excludes individuals. Uh, the major purpose of exclusion criteria is to exclude people at high risk. You know, we're excluding people above 80, blah, 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 okay? Uh, and so inclusion criteria details the, um, the essentially we are specifying the disease you're looking into and how you're defining that illness, like whatever type of like respiratory failure with uh, oxygen tensions below you know, 80 on above 40% FiO2, blah, 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 okay. Here, uh, it's not necessary to exclude anybody. So, I mean, so actually, uh, this is, um, this is fine. Um, a, uh, getting back to fine, uh, any type of writing, I have learned, that this and or business is unnecessary. It is never necessary to put down and or. You just put down and. Um, or just or, okay? But and or, I never like that. But anyway, minor point. All right, so uh, sampling. What so about this? Excuse me, that? I have comment. comment. Yes. Excuse me, I have comment on the inclusion and exclusion criteria here. They included uh, members who are serving or served in the past. Okay. So, for example, uh, if we include someone who served in the uh, REC 20 years ago, their perceived challenge will be not current. Okay, well, that's a good point. So, how could you fix that? For example, I, I may suggest that the exclusion criteria include persons who are serving or served, for example, in the last five years. Okay, very good. Excellent. Good. Within the last five years. All right. All right. I could, uh, I could uh, definitely um, uh, uh, Agree with that. Okay, good. Good point. Uh, what about the sampling? Um, I, I thought that it could be stratified according to the proportion of the population from, from each faculty. For example, if, if we have, he said later on that most, most of the participants were from, from the faculty of nursing. So I think we should have stratified the sample, like 20%, 40%, 30% according to the uh, population in each, uh, or, or, or sample frame in each, in each faculty. And is that really necessary? I, I thought that would affect the, the results being the major. Why? For example, uh, the, being for example the major uh, uh, part of the population or, or the participants from one faculty, mm, 
I thought that would affect the results. It would, it would uh, not be homogeneous. Well, other thoughts? What do other people think about that? Actually, I am confused because he is mentioning in the sampling that convenience sampling and then he mentioned that uh, uh, he sent email to all faculty members so I, I can't understand what 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 he or she did okay well let's uh, get to that point in just a minute but what about the point that Sarah is raising I think I, we don't have to do that because it's all in the medical field or, you know, like the medicine and nursing and pharmacy. We didn't complain about having only three from Oman comparing to 15 from Jordan. So the percentage itself is it's not significant for taking the result or analyzing the data. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think these three different faculties face different challenges. Uh, now, I mean, uh, if you did, one would do a comparative analysis between, between the uh, three different faculties. Uh, so actually, one time I did a study looking at the um, knowledge of REC members from, from different faculties in Cairo University, and there was a difference. Uh, but I didn't um, bother taking a, a, a proportion of what now again? How would you take a, what, what proportion would you take? Uh, based on what? Mm -hmm. I think Sarah is stuck. She doesn't want to answer my question. So, so you are asking about the proportion in, in, in the nursing, you mean? In the nursing, why did she say that the nursing was the highest? Well, I don't know if she said it was the highest, but she was mentioning about taking a proportion. Yeah, because in in the in the in the sample when he, when they mentioned the college, they mentioned that they have like. 47 participants from the nursing faculty, which is almost half of the sample size of, of this, so. Okay, so, in, uh, so what's wrong with that? I'm not sure, but uh, if, uh, should they mention uh, is this all members from the same faculty? Because maybe they will, they, they will have the same problems. Well, yeah, they might. I mean, he's just trying to increase his, uh, his sample size. Uh, I mean, it's all about increasing your sample size. So he takes it from two countries, different faculties. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I mean, I, uh, I'm just assuming that uh, even though he said he wants to do a comparative, he doesn't mention comparative between what? countries mm. or faculties. Or faculties. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe he, he did set up to do between different faculties and uh, uh, saw there was no difference. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, one could have, well, I, I, I'll walk that back. Maybe those different faculties have different challenges. I don't know. Yeah. But and and also different academic ranks. Maybe professors will face more challenges than lecturers. Uh, well, you could do it between different types of back, uh, 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 faculty ranks as well, but now um, you have to have a large sample size for that. Uh, mm -hmm. You could look well, at uh, it. I have something to say about that. I actually felt it's really uh, unrealistic to um, to put uh, like participant that they, they didn't receive any formal ethics training in the research ethics committee. And actually, it was like only 50, almost 50, 50 percent, like 47 to 51, 47 received the training. 
You want because, to say you know, all farmers? I think it's actually uh, the compar comparison should be between the people that didn't have the training and the people that had the training. Because, you know, uh, uh, you. Oh, okay. You know, I, mean, I, mean, I, I mean, you, you could do that. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, let's, let's save that until we get to the demographics, okay? Okay. Um, right now, he's just describing the methodology. Okay. All right. So, uh, Data collection, uh, technique. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, you don't have to end a, a uh, just some more English style stuff going on. Uh, you don't have to say or not. Um, uh, was um, uh, we, we chose universities that had an ethical committee. Well, that makes sense, right? You're not going to go into a university without an REC. Um, okay. So um, the uh, other thing, and uh, where was that? Oh, okay. Prepare a list of universities which have, okay? I'm gonna make a very specific stylistic point, okay? A list of universities which have medical or health science faculties, okay? He is um, identifying which universities. He's defining these universities on a specific criteria, having an REC. And the proper word choice is that. This is getting really specific, but it's, it is an important distinction. When you have a clause that defines which universities you're talking about, you use the word that. If, it, if this clause is not defining who you're picking, okay, then you use the word which. Um, okay, yeah, it's a small point, look out for it. That's all I'm trying to say. I, I just felt obligated to, to mention that. Isabel would would be proud of me for, for for doing that. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. So, uh, anything else about the data collection technique? So, this is what you were talking about, Said. Uh, uh, I I was confused too. Uh, did he send it out to? Um, uh, all, I mean, all faculty members? I mean, uh, I don't understand that. Uh, I mean, we're just looking for REC members, right? So that's a, that is a little confusing why he sent an email to all faculty. Uh, he says, uh, uh, what does he, the, to all faculty members. Uh, so I don't know if he put, the email, if you're serving on the REC, please, please respond. Maybe, maybe that's why he did that. But surely he was searching for REC members. Any, any other thoughts about that? Yeah, I want to ask uh, if I, in, in any survey or questionnaire, I send uh, a survey uh, by email. Uh, and take those uh, responding. Uh, is this simple uh, random sample or convenience? Is this what? Uh, simple random or convenient sample? No, it's not random because he's not, you know, uh, just like what Sama explained, uh, uh, a random sample would be, um, I would take every third person who responded. 
yeah. as opposed to everyone who responds. But, but he's trying but, to enhance his uh, sample size, so he's going to take everyone. It's not randomly selected. Uh, also, having said that, it's people who respond, so right then and there you have selection bias. Only those people who respond. And that's fine. You just um, list that in your limitation page. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it affects general, general, uh, uh, can't pronounce that word in the afternoon, generalizability of the, of the results. But that's fine. Okay. Uh, and, uh, Okay, right, so I think, uh, so we're, we're fine with that. The survey, okay, so what, what do you think about the survey? First of all, you didn't mention the previous literature that supports the survey. Right, so that's right, what previous literature? What's, what's the secret here? Tell us, inform us, okay? And uh, all right, very good. And uh, uh, the liquor scale. Yeah, what about it? I think it, it, it's like an open an open question here. What do you mean? It's an have, open question. Like you know, like uh, strongly disagree and agree. It, it's well, not, why is that open? I, I don't know. No, I felt like you know he need to have more constructive, uh, you know, survey or scale than liquor. Why? I have no idea. Uh, well, I, I was then, then, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you can't uh, raise that point without oh. further explanation. I mean, yeah. uh, a, a liquid scale is maybe, maybe very important. appropriate to assess uh, uh, your your questions. Maybe because he only chose like. 12 items. I, I didn't feel that it was uh, the right uh, way to choose that the scale. There was another scale that you mentioned in the beginning of our lectures, but I couldn't find it. So uh, okay, yeah. well, that, that's uh, now you could uh, comment on 12 items, but don't comment. That has nothing to do with the liquid scale. So what do you think about the liquid scale? What's that? What do you think about the liquid scale? Was, uh, was it a well, good choice? I, I think using the liquid scale in a, a survey is fine. My, my only objection is that uh, it's only four point. And um, he or she left out... Uh, the neutral point. Uh, uh, right. And I have gotten away with using the term neutral. Uh, because I don't know what neutral means. Does it mean no opinion or I don't know? Mm. There's so, another point. So I use the, I, I use the um, uh, phrase no opinion. And mm. sometimes I also include I don't know. Those are two different constructs. Yeah. No yes. and no opinion. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now I, uh, I have another point. I don't know uh, 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 to say it here or in the results, but in the Likert scale, in the results, he only uh, uh, put them in two categories: uh, uh, strongly agree, agree in one category, and disagree. Okay. Why? Why we get to? We'll, we'll talk about that in the results section. Okay. Okay. How's that? All right. And. Uh, so well, here he chose he chose he or she he chose like twelve items only. So um, should I comment that there may be more challenges, or maybe they need like an open-ended question? Any uh, uh, anything well, you want to add? Okay. Uh, this will change the change the question the, the the study design. This will change the study design. What what need the study design? How would that? What do you mean by? I mean, maybe uh, it would be wise to, to have like an interview with the participants, well, not just uh, a survey. Well, I mean, uh, that depends on whether 
one needs to do an interview study. Now, mm -hmm. an interview study would be more exploratory, okay? Mm -hmm. Apparently, this person looked at the previous literature, so mm -hmm. he or she had some idea of what the challenges were. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and now he just wants to quantify it yeah. for the Arab region, which is fine. Now, having said that, I, I want to know uh, how he chose 12 items from the previous literature. And which are the 12 items? It's well, listed down. down in the results. In the, in the results. Okay. Yeah, but uh, still, why uh, these? Why specifically these? Well, yeah, yeah, right. I agree. So mm -hmm. why these 12 and what previous mm -hmm. literature? Now, maybe the previous literature were from the four studies he quoted uh, from, you know, Turkey, blah, 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 and all that, okay? But I, I want to know more of a, of a methodology on why he chose 12. Now, having said that, I happen to think that the 12 items ch chosen were, were pretty good items, but well, we'll get to that. Okay, and uh, the validity and reliability was established through a pilot stage, okay? Uh, he did the Kronbach. Uh, now, that, that tests for validity. That doesn't test for reliability. To have reliability, you need... Um, to have a test and retest on the same participants. Okay, so mm. overstating how he validated this survey. Okay, mm. all right, okay. so. And uh, he still couldn't include in the final analysis. So what was the point? I'm, I'm sorry? He still couldn't even include the pilot testing in the final analysis, so what was the no, point? No, he didn't, he said we're, we're not included. Yeah. But they should not be included, right? Right, yeah, yeah. you yeah. don't include that in the, in yeah. the final yeah. analysis. Yeah. Okay, very good. All right, so uh, let's see now. Uh, and then the ethics. Um, oh, okay. Um, another small point. Um, Principle. There's two ways to spell principle. Mm. Okay? And is that the right way for a principal investigator? What do you mean? No. Oh. No. There's two. There's the principle meaning. The concept, right? Right, yes. And principal investigator, principal it's like the main one. Oh, yeah. P -A -L. P -A -L. So how? Mm. Okay. Mm. And don't you forget it ever again. Whenever say principal investigator, it's P A L. Because the principal investigator is your pal. Always remember how to spell the word principal investigator. Okay? All right. Okay, minor point, but no reason to make that mistake. Okay. All right, let's let's move on. Uh, data analysis. Oh, okay. What about the ethics? Yeah. Um he was really good at mentioning here that uh, the participant, uh, like you know, the result was treated anonymously and uh, they had the right to withdraw at any time and uh, not to answer any questions in the surveys. And uh, the data were very well protected. Just want to comment that was a good thing in the manuscript. Okay, all right, good. So, very good. Anything about the analysis? Yeah. 
they didn't mention if they if, if the data are uh, normally distributed or not. Well, how do you know that until you get the results? At least I can say that I will uh, check or test the data for normality. Okay. All right. That's fine. Yeah, I, you mentioned I don't find that uh, uh, obligatory. Um, any other comments? Yeah, he said that the new variables were created to better describe the challenges. Uh, I'm not sure if he's if he's allowed to do that. Isn't that some can consider bias? So. I have no idea. It well, why would that be bias? bias? It's like, you know, like manipulating the results or the data so it can be adjusted much better. Well, he's he's telling you ahead of time they did this. But he didn't mention which new variables. Well, right, but in the results section. Uh, so you look at the results section and you make a determination where, as to whether the five items represent management issues, misconduct issues, okay, yeah. qualification and experience. So you decide whether he divided up the items correctly or not. So how about the way that you do that? Okay, so how about the way that he collected the variables that has low rates in That's some right. response categories? Well, why do we uh, uh, wait until we get to the results section? No, it said here uh, two, two lines under that. What's that? It said here like line nine in page five. Yeah. He said that it's variable with low rates and some response category were recategorized or merged uh, categories. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I agree with that point. Uh, were recategorized when applicable. Well, well, we'll see what the final categories are, but I, I agree with that. That's, that's a little sketchy there. Uh, and, uh, okay. And, oh, by the way, I have, no idea what this sentence means. I don't know, maybe you did, but I certainly have no idea what that means. Okay. Um, all right, so in the last step, oh, uh, now he starts, um, what, what, this uh, last step here, so a, a logistic regression, associated factors with being an REC member in Oman in, or in Jordan. What, what did you think about that? Actually, I was going to ask about that. What is the right analysis? Is this, um, is this a the right analysis? The right, what do you mean by what is the right analysis? Like he said that he's going to use this analysis to identify associated factors. Right, so what do you think about that? I don't think it's the right analysis, but I'm really weak in statistics. Well, well, well tell me more. Why don't you think it's the right analysis? Because it's like, you know, like you're identifying these factors. It's not logistic. He wants to identify associated factors. And these are the associated factors. These are the independent uh, variables. Maybe because he, he, he suggested that it's going to be at the B value of, like it's not significant, it's going to be at the B value smaller than 0.05. Oh, no, no, no. You're not understanding what he's doing. What, what does he mean by the answer method? I have no idea what the meaning is wrong. Okay, well then uh, it's hard to criticize something you don't know what he means. Um, yeah. So it's, it's okay to say yes. it needs clarification, but you can't criticize it. Yeah. You can't criticize something you don't know. 
about it. Uh, so now, I'm, uh, my two thoughts are, one, the nth method is usually when you do bivariate analysis and the p-value, now, you want to know which variables to put in your logistic regression model. And if, uh, now most people take a p-value of 0.05 on bivariate analysis and use it in multivariate analysis. Actually, you're allowed to take a significance uh, level of 0.2 of what you find in bivariate analysis to build up your multivariate model. But that's for a discussion for another day. Uh, my, uh, my thoughts about this last paragraph is, where's the bivariate analysis, okay? And he's using independent factors, these categories that he's testing out in his survey, and he wants to know the, I, I, uh, the factors with being an REC member in Oman or Jordan. How does that relate to the purpose of this paper? I think uh, he means that if he can have all this uh, um, data, he can explain uh, what is the gap. Uh, the gap in what? In, in, in the challenges that we have. How, how, how is factors related to being a member is related to challenges? Uh, because he mentioned some of them didn't have a proper training, uh, so that might affect the decision that they are making. And thus that can, can affect all their decision or uh, their, the way that they review uh, proposals and projects and... Uh, well, I mean, all you have to do is know uh, whether they had ethics training or not, but you don't need to go through this logistic regression analysis um, to find the factors with being an REC member. Uh, and uh, uh, I mean, I just, I just don't understand what the heck he's doing here. Uh, and he certainly never explains it, why he did this. He mentioned something about like hidden agenda for some of the members of the RECs. He mentioned what? He's, he's, he mentioned from one of the problem that they had, like some of the members had hidden agendas and maybe that he was trying to see how these members are qualified to be in the REC and the bias between them to choose proposals or make decisions. Oh, okay, but how is that related to uh, a factor with being a member? Maybe it's that like the, a uh, he he's he's uh uh I mean uh I just don't understand uh which factors predicts who's being an REC member. I mean I I agree that challenges uh, represent internal and external factors. I mean, uh, if you're not well trained, you're going to have uh, challenges. And then, you know, you could then test that out on the survey, uh, which we'll see in the results section. But how is knowing the associated factors with being an REC member? affects the uh, challenges. Well, let's, when we get to the results section, I mean, one could do a comparative analysis and see if uh, 
is an association between uh, how people mock down challenges and independent factors like ethics training or faculty member, uh, blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, it could be, uh, what are the associated factors with having a perception of, 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 of that being a challenge? I think he or she was intending to compare the, the, the participant from Oman with the participant from Jordan. But, but this, um, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but logistic regression, like we, we, we usually use it to, to detect correlation. So there's nothing to correlate with being in Oman or in Jordan. That's the point, or this, this is the, the, the missing part here. Why did they correlate? to the country? Well, uh, well, he said, or Jordan. Um, he's not comparing Oman and Jordan. Uh, I perceived yeah. it like this. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I think mm -hmm. uh, it might, it, it, it might very well have been good to, uh, to see, I mean, different REC members will perceive different challenges, right? The title of this paper is Perceptions of Challenges. So what are those perceptions based on? What are the factors? Okay. Uh, and uh, so, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you more about what I mean when we finally, I know you've all been itching to discuss the results section. So let's, let's, go, let's go to that. Okay, so here's the uh, usual um, you know, the usual descriptive stuff. Okay, and uh, let me uh, uh, it's the challenge I have when I look at tables. Okay, table one, a hundred, a hundred people. Oh, all right, that's interesting. I didn't pick this up before. Even though only three universities from Oman and 15 from Jordan, he did have 34 percent of his population is from Oman. Okay. Isn't right. even like a hundred a hundred participants uh, is a, a, a representative of sample size? Uh, well, one one could comment on how he determined the sample size, which he he never detailed in the methodology, right? Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. So. Be suspicious of sample sizes of 100 and 200. Uh, so uh, that's the other thing. Okay, he lists the different colleges, academic rank. Uh, one person was a genetic counselor. I never mm -hmm. thought that was an academic rank. But I guess I guess it is. All right, so that's uh, uh, table one. Table two. Uh, table two is the um, is the background. All right. So anything about table two? Yeah, does the uh, ethics committee require all members to have ethical training? I'm sorry? You know, um, second, second one in table two, does the ethics committee require all members to have ethical training? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't make sense that I'm, I'm having troubles and challenges between the REC's members, and I have 74 of them didn't receive ethical training. 
how would this make the, the research or the, the study itself legit? Uh, how does it make what? How, how would that make this study legit? Like, you know, I'm, 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 one of the things that he was saying here, the qualification of the members. So they didn't even receive training, ethical training. How, how he can judge the challenges if they don't even understand what the meaning of the ethical issues that they are facing. So, uh, so what's the point you're making? I was the one that voted the major, uh, major uh, revisions, not rejection of the project. But I'm not sure if this qualifies. Qualifies for what? If I cannot write, how you can challenge me or consider me between the people that write if I'm facing problem to write? To write? I mean, I, I'm write. giving an example, you know? Well, I mean, one wants to know if they require ethical training. And, uh, and that could explain why reviewing protocols would be a challenge. And then you would want to know whether uh, those committees that uh, provide uh, training or not have those challenges. Uh, now, what I don't understand is uh, this is background facts on an REC's on a group level. Um, does the ethics committee require all members? So, 74 said no. Um, all right, so those 74 does not, does not require, uh, but then on the last line on table two, do you, did you receive any formal training? Yes. Oh, and the responsible conduct of research, which is a more specific training than ethical training. Um, so, uh, responsible conduct of research may include ethical review, I don't know. Um, and, uh, well, let's see how, I mean, uh, I mean, again, I'm, I'm looking for uh, association between independent variables and dependent variables. So I want to know if uh, uh, challenges, certain challenges are related to certain independent variables. And it could be, does the ethic committee require all members to have ethical training? If the answer is no, that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have ethical training. It's just asking, do you require it? So I, I have a problem with uh, trying to investigate whether members have ethical training or not. Um, and so if I want to know whether having ethical training is related to having a perception of, of having a challenge, that's the wrong question to ask. But I think it's... Uh, well, it says there are background facts on the RECs, but I tell you what, I don't see how table two is related to challenges. Like how decisions are made. I don't see how that's related to a challenge. Methods of selecting members, volunteer or appointed. Uh, well, We'll see that when we get to the results, but I, I, I can't remember until we 
review the results section. Uh, are, are any of these factors related to the results? Well, let's look at the results. Okay. I, I want to ask about the second question. Does the ethics committee require all members to have ethical training? Right. So, uh, number four, other. Should it be more specific, like more than by annually or less than by annually? I mean, other yeah, no, doesn't I agree. mean anything to me. I don't know what other me. means. Mm, I don't that, know. I don't know. Mm. Right? Yeah, I agree. I don't know what uh, other means. Yeah. Does it mean more than by annually or maybe every two years? Well, uh, no. It doesn't have a meaning. Well, I, I mean, biannually, annually. If it's not, if it's less than annually, I would rather have you say no. <laughs> uh, okay? <laughs> okay. But other should have meant, I don't know. Right? I, yeah. I just don't know. All right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It's better. All right. Okay. All right. So let's see now. All right. All right, so uh, this was uh, so this was combined. That's what we usually. Oh, what happened here? I'm just finding out new things here. Yeah, how, that's nice. How did I pop that up? <laughs> we have no idea, but it's cool. <laughs> okay, I like it there. I don't want to reach well. over there. Okay. All right, good. So this is, uh, it's kind of tight there. Um, I mean, uh, all right. Uh, however, detail frequencies. Well, see, I don't understand this. First, they say they combined it, and then they say, well, detail frequencies are provided. What's the purpose of combining? Yeah, this is the point Sarah asked. Sarah, unmute yourself. What's that? Uh, Sarah raised this point. She, she said, if, if we have four categories, why did we compare between two categories or consider them two well, categories? Well, yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Because you uh, mentioned that they're not going to have significance or something like that. Oh, look at this. I could write with my finger. Okay. I thought I had to use the pen. That's so cool. That's okay. so cool. All right. Uh, okay. Participants divided. I don't understand this. Uh, oh, oh, I see. He's di discussing the results. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, this should have been in the um, methods section. Okay, because I'm confused. Okay, this is the, a methodology item that should have been in methods. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, so he's discussing the results and uh, Okay. All right. Let's uh let's go to table three. Uh, I'm not sure if this represents bias. Right? Just because you have different opinions. I mean, that's what happens. I'm not sure if that represents bias. Um, management issues. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a management issue. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, and I don't know how that's related to a challenge. 
Oh, well, to, to detect fluoride? Well, I guess that might be a challenge. Okay. All right. Um, so, so what do you think about these results? Well, actually, I think it's, um, it's very biased. What's bias? Like, uh, what, do you mean? Um, what I mean, okay. So the thing is, um, for every item that he asked about, there was almost strongly agree, like this, this numbers of strongly agree or who voted for strongly agree are very small that he might be the one that he considered not significant or that's why he combined it to agree so he can raise higher percentage to the agree point. But I felt from looking at it, it's like, I, I'm sure that it's not manipulated, but I felt like, you know, not everybody's telling the truth. I don't know how you can know that, but I felt this way. Well, yeah, that's always a problem with survey research. That's, that's not his bias. I mean, these are the facts. He asked people to respond. And this is how yeah. they responded. So but how is that bias? I'm not sure if it's, a, if it's the bias from the people that did the survey or the bias from the one who's presenting the manuscript. Because you know, if, okay, you, well, if, if you're applying- Or the one who, it, who's what? Or the one that, you know, like uh, submitting the manuscript. Well, uh, well, well how, how could that be? Okay, so uh, for me, I strongly agree for like item one and two and three, for example, consider the like an outliers comparing to the other numbers that they voted for strongly. Oh, now, whoa, 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 whoa. Now, you're exhibiting bias. Who are we to say whether these are outliers? Uh, uh, I said that I felt that it's uh, outliers because he decided that uh, whatever is going to be not like, you know, so low rates, he's going to combine, combine it with other categories or he's going to recategorize it. So I felt he's, he's biased to avoid outliers. Well, you, you can't tell that with table three. He said that in one of the... I, well, he, he said if he had low response. Um, but, I mean, uh, I don't know whether he wound up combining, but uh, now, uh, actually, I don't know what that actually means, but let's just look at table three, and let's not worry about any uh, data manipulation. Let's not assume that. Uh, these are the data. Uh, actually, the, the, the total number is 98, not 100. Uh, okay, well, uh, maybe a few, two people didn't respond. That's fine. Uh, is it a, a 98 for every line item? Uh, for almost, I counted them till okay. the item for eight or nine. All right, so, you yeah, know, that's happens in survey research, not everybody answers all the questions. Um, so, yeah, it's different. Uh, I mean, that's fine. Right. He, he could have clarified that. that okay. Can we put this in the survey? What's that? Uh, can we say that, can we put this in the survey when we're doing it? Like we say like uh, no response and give a number? So yeah, we can right. add up to the hundred? Yeah, you could just okay. say one person didn't respond. That's fine. Okay. okay. So, I mean, well, okay. Let's, let's not, uh, uh, these are the numbers. It is what it is. Okay. We can't dispute it. That's not our job. So away from the numbers, I don't What's know. That? Uh, away from the numbers, I, I have a concern regarding the, the question itself. For example, if I put myself uh, as a participant uh, for question number one, 
the members of committee have limited experience in research. How could I be sure if they are experienced or not? I mean, these are I'm not the person who should who should decide this, right? These are perceptions. So here, I, I just want to have the option, no opinion, or I don't know. I don't know why. Because yeah, well, some, we're already yeah. mentioning that. Mm. Uh, that's a, a problem with this Likert scale. Uh, I very rarely see a four-item Likert scale. No mm. doubt about that. Because uh, when, when I first read the, the title of the paper, uh, I thought that this would be like uh, personal issues not relating to the other members. I thought it, it's going to talk about uh, time uh, consumption, uh, maybe the financial reward, uh, maybe the conflict with, the, uh, like revising something, I, I don't have idea medical uh, about medical well, research I in mean, a certain uh, area. You, you could, I think it's okay to ask members hmm. the challenges of ethics committees um, include Members have limited experience okay. in research. Okay. That's my perception of our mm -hmm. challenges. I mean, I think it's very good to ask members of the Research Ethics Committee, what mm -hmm. are your perceptions of the challenges? And I think it's fair to ask, what, what do you think about your fellow members? Well. They don't know much. That's a challenge when we review protocols. I think that's so. Fair. Maybe we have to book. So maybe we have to put these within the items. The question that you suggested right now in the survey. Maybe we have to do what? Like uh, add these questions. What questions? The survey that you just mentioned. Like what's your? Oh, no, it's, it's here. It's already in here. Yeah, he mentioned it. There it is. That's fine. That was the question. I mean, yeah, but he, he didn't ask about the other people. Like the other people. Well, who is he asking? This is the other people. Yes, no. The the um the the only um uh, I guess the issue for me I mean I think these are good questions. The issue t for me is what challenges did he leave out based on previous literature? Okay, and uh, uh, you know, other challenges would be like, is there a budget uh, for the REC? Does the organization support the REC? Okay, uh, and uh, 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 so there could have been some other challenges he could have mentioned. And what could I say? He could have realized that if he did a better literature search. Okay. May I ask, uh, can I ask something? Uh, yeah, me too. What's that? Yeah, can I ask? So uh, if you suggested to him that he do better uh, review of literature, and add these things. Can he redo the survey, or he can add these questions to the survey and? Ask well, what do you mean by redo point? the survey? Like redo the whole study again. Well, you could always redo the survey, but these results you have to throw out. You can't add them. Yeah, but what if I wanna like you said that. I want to enrich or, you know, like have, have him have um, a, a better understanding about the real challenges, like you mentioned, the budget and the organization support that are. All right, well, then he has now to I do can the study over again. Yeah. 
Okay, so but you can't uh, use these responses. Yeah, so that's mean you're gonna reject his manuscript. Well, uh, let's finish the uh, review. May I ask how, how can we judge a questionnaire on the question of the survey? Uh, do we have any uh, uh, objective way to, to, to judge this? Is it enough? Uh, does it not cover uh, all the aspects? Well, I mean, that's what I'm discussing now is that uh, I, I don't, I mean, I think these questions are good. Uh, I think though, he could have added more. So it's subjective, it's, a, it's something subjective. Well, yeah, right, it's based on my subjectivism, okay? Yeah. But, I mean, that's my prerogative as a reviewer. Uh, there's mm. no norm of I mean, no checklist, no form, no, no, nothing like this. A checklist of what? Challenges? No, uh, uh, I, I don't know the structure of the questions. Um, I don't understand what you mean by a checklist. Uh, um, I, an objective way to, to, to judge it in like uh, 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 does the question really assess uh, the problem uh well that's an interesting question i mean we're just dealing with perceptions uh, and well you know challenges when you think about it are subjective mm. you know i mean what are your challenges? You, you don't have to specify. Uh, we all have challenges in life. And it's different yeah. from person to another. Right. Yeah, right. So, but, you know, if you ask a uh, hundred people, what are the challenges? You know, I mean, you saw the results. It's almost like across the board, half and half. You know, 50% said yes, 50% said no. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, one, one Ben could only say, uh, well, what are the major challenges? And then you could make an arbitrary cutoff and say, if 80% said lack of experience, one could say that's a major challenge. Okay. Which would be fair, 80%, 90%, 70%. It's all subjective. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you're not looking for, uh, you're not looking to, to land a person on, on Mars, so you don't need to know the exact exit velocity of the rocket ship, okay? Yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, uh, if, if somebody said, if only 10% said management issues is a challenge, then you could say, well, that's, that's not a major challenge. So it is all subjective, okay? Uh, I mean, the study we did years ago about assessing the needs of RECs in Egypt, uh, I mean, uh, we, we looked at, you know, you looked at, you're quantifying it and you're going to use a judgment as to which one constitutes a major challenge. Again, if 80% said yes, then that would be a major challenge. So here, uh, I mean, he didn't, I don't think he did this in the discussion, but uh, 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 yeah, review and proposal consume an extended amount of time. 70% said agree or strongly agree. 70%, that's a major challenge, okay? Uh, 
and uh, uh, some members might intentionally block studies of others, 39%. Well, I mean, I don't know what's the cutoff or a major challenge, mm -hmm. but I mean, in the discussion, in the analysis, you know, one could just arbit arbitrarily say, well, these are uh, uh, members, uh, items agreed upon more than 30% were blah, blah, blah. We, we consider this to be major challenges. If more than 30% agreed, Pick your number, 30%, 40%, 50%. It's all arbitrary, okay? Uh, that's my opinion. And, you know, uh, you could have your own opinion, but these are the facts. Or um, uh, some members are fives, 39. I mean, I could say, you know, anything over 40% is a major challenge. It's all arbitrary. Subjective, but these are the facts. And uh, one, uh, but uh, now, uh, again, he's picking these items from surveys from other countries. Uh, now, I can't remember if he compared these results with other countries. We'll get to that in just in just a minute because time is running out. But these are good questions. Um, let me just, just to uh, move along, uh, table four, I mean, let me just say uh, factors is this the logistic regression or the, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I never saw the bivariate results. Okay, um, to build the logistic model. Um, so, uh, so what does this mean? Being a male, you're more likely to be an REC member. That's probably right, right? We we knew that without without this study. Oh, oh, unless you're in the faculty of nursing. Okay. Uh, Right, so uh, what else was, oh yeah, look, it's either 0.05 or 0.05. Forget about this um, business here, okay? Don't ever do that. It's either 0.05 or less, okay? Um, so what else is significant? Uh, Receive formal training, no. Yes. Okay. College of Medicine. I don't know what that means about being uh, in the REC. Uh, so, I don't know. You know, my recommendation is to throw table four out. I don't see how it relates to challenges. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's, um, let's, uh, Fast forward here to the, uh, is there a go-to button? Yeah, it was here before the, all the markers show. What's that? It was, it was on your screen before all the markers show. It was like, you know, like. Uh, there was a go-to button? Yeah, an arrow or something like that. Oh wait, done. What does that mean? Ah, done. All right, I kind of got used to it. Uh, where's the, uh, I don't see the arrows. Yeah, they disappeared now. There was like a cross and uh, an arrow and another one in the middle of oh, the wait, page. Oh, what's this? I don't. They're not here anymore. Well, we're almost there. Discussion. Okay, what do you think about the discussion section? Let's, uh, let's take this, let's take this home. 
sorry, I got disconnected and tried many times with VPN. I couldn't I'm sorry? join. Sorry, I got disconnected with the VPN. I tried many oh, times. Okay, I yeah, couldn't. I'm yet. glad. So, I'm. I'm glad you, you are in the discussion section. Uh, to me, it seems like uh, it. It just like a conclusion in first two paragraphs in discussion. It doesn't look like a discussion to me. Uh, well, I mean, on the page, I, uh, I agree. Uh, how did I get the... Yeah, it shows now. Yeah, again, it no, says... I don't know how I got the bottom one. They are in the middle? They are in the middle of the page, of the screen. They have a cross of the build again. They have a what? Uh, like three marks, three symbols in the middle, but they disappeared now. Yeah, I know. Yes. I, I Can you see, see them it. now? See what? There's a cross and prop and like. Oh yeah, no, that's uh, that's something else. Uh, I put the one with the arrow that you can go down with it, like down the page. Well, that's download. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, I agree uh, in comparison, but he never compared it. I mean, what's up with No that? comparison, yeah. The, the two different people write this on paper or what? Okay. Uh, okay, Collaboration so he makes between two overall, countries. the majority Perceive qualification experience as appropriate. I, I don't know. What, <laughs> where did he get that conclusion from? What do you mean as appropriate? Qualifications uh, 40, 50 disagree. So it's 50 50. How is that appropriate? 50 50. I mean, if I selected six people in my program and 50% were good, that's not appropriate. Okay, so I don't know where, where this comes from. Okay. Uh, and so now he quotes the literature from consumer perspective. What the heck does that word mean? Um, what, the public? I mean, I have to go to these three papers here. Uh, not qualified. For example, now, for example, evaluate a decision letter. Did not justify the comments. Well, how is that related to um, being qualified? Discussion. No, I, I'm just thinking how these references relates to his discussion. What do you mean? Because, for example, the second one, he brings example from Clap et al. A recent study conducted to evaluate... Yeah, I know, I agree that that's that nothing... Majority. Yeah, nothing yeah, to do with Yeah, this analogy their... doesn't work. Okay, no. and uh, there's a need to compare studies, perspective of ethics committees with the researchers. How, uh, how do researchers know, are the researchers now going to uh, get their opinions about the qualifications of the research members? I mean, uh, and, uh, oh, oh, consumer. Oh, I think he means consumer from the researchers. The researchers are the consumers. Yeah, the, the one that they are submitting the proposal of their project. Right, yeah. the RECs yeah. and the consumers. But I don't see uh, how 
consumers could rate the experience of REC members. Uh, that's, that's too much of a leap, okay? So I don't, uh, I don't understand that. Okay, all right. Uh, now he says, the majority without qualifications. Well, wait a second. I thought he said perceived as appropriate. Yes. So where is he getting this from? Well, actually, they are not the majority. They are not just 50% of them. Well, but he's saying two things. Here he's saying uh, it's, it's appropriate. Okay, whoa. Ah, what do you think of that? Uh, all right, excellent, okay. Okay, all right. And then now he's saying it's, it's without qualifications. So I don't know, um, I don't know why, he, and there's a, a need to recruit members with experience. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, All right, so apparently this paper also showed that there are unqualified members. But in the first paragraph, he said they are appropriate. So uh, there's an internal contradiction there. Okay, so, uh, uh, so let me just, um, now he talks about, all right, so uh, he talks about this, uh, this program in Jordan at Just. I happen to, to know about that program in Just, okay? And uh, um, so I don't know, um, I don't know why he's, oh, I guess he starts talking about the uh, oh, okay. Here, here's, uh, here, here's another personal stuff. What could I say? Ah, that's how I got it. Okay. Uh, 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 the program was considered one of the first. Well, what could I say? That program started three, four years ago. Okay, okay. Uh, enough said. Okay. Anyway, all right. So, anything else? Um, so, just to. Uh, The, oh, what do you think about the discussion? Um, I guess, so what, what's the major point? What's the major conclusion here? I mean, he, he does say, all right, uh, uh, Lack a universal framework, and uh, authors in this study establish a universal framework. However, uh, my problem with that is that Jordan has a a law, a research law. that advises to use the Helsinki document. So why is there lacking a universal 
framework. Okay? Uh, then lack of universal framework. Uh, and uh, uh, for the role, so, I mean, Jordan has a law. So, I mean, how many people said they lacked a universal framework? Oh, the committee does not have a universal framework. And 55% said agree. So, I would want to know the difference between Oman and Jordan. In fact, it might be uh, It, it, it might be interesting for that question alone to see a comparative analysis between Oman and Jordan. Because Jordan has a law, I don't know about Oman, uh, but if Oman has a law and Jordan has a law, why are they saying they don't have a universal framework? And what does it mean for a country to have a universal framework? I thought it would be a national framework. Yeah, I think it means a, a unified instead of universal. <laughs> yeah, well, like between all universities at national level. Oh, okay, I see, I see. All right, yeah, right, good point, good point. Okay, let me... Oh, I thought I could make that. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh, I could actually. Oh, wow, okay. All right. Uh, researchers in this study use survey. Oh, highlight. Oh. This Which study? All right, uh, I don't understand what that means. Self-reporting bias. The response rate was low. How do you know that? If you sent it out to all faculty. Maybe they sent it out to a thousand faculty. So I don't know why, how they know the response rate was low. Although an email was sent to all faculty. All right. Uh, however, it might be considered as reasonable considering the target population, limited number of scientists. So that's what they did. They sent it to all faculty uh, and the number of people on the faculty on RECs are low. So it's, it's just, just not making any sense. Why didn't he just send it to members of the committee. Maybe he doesn't know. Doesn't yeah, totally. Know no, totally. Uh, no, Sasan, the name Maybe of the red know. members, the, num the name of the red members are, are, uh, are known. So each research ethics committee has a list of their members. It's not secret. If he knows, if he that, knows that why, know. okay, if he knows that why he sent it to everybody. Well, uh, well uh, one, at the very least, you could send it to the chairs yeah. of the RECs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In, in, in our biobank research study, we're, we're just about to send a survey to members of the RECs. Okay? Mm -hmm. And we're going to send the survey link to the REC chairs and 
we're providing an incentive to complete the questionnaire and the incentive will be a one day conference in your country that we will sponsor. So we're not gonna send it to all faculty. All right, sorry. Uh, so, uh, so this is an important point, the how people distribute their surveys. And I think that, um, well, there's many different ways to do it and I'm not sure about the way they did it. Um, okay, so, okay, here we go. In conclusion, all right, need to address in order to improve, there is no good are you research. Any point, What's that? Are you any point? Are you any in any point close to our uh, vote to reject, or you are still on your? Oh, hold, on, hold on. All I'm just saying is that this line here that's plagiarized. Oh my God! Okay. He did not think of it himself, okay? And uh, that is just what we call push lead, okay? Um, so, uh, all right, so where are we here? Let me, I think, um, so, I will give you my opinion, but I'm gonna have you take one more poll. Okay, please rate the extent of your agreement with the following statements, okay? And, and I think you could move this to strongly disagree to strongly agree. So go to menti.com and use that code. This is anonymous. Okay. All right, very good. Oh, no, I meant uh, the activity itself. Why don't we re-vote? Oh, Maha says I cannot vote. She can say what she wants in the chat box and we're gonna... All right, anybody else? Who, who can't vote? Maha. Maha. I'm trying to find a way to salvage this paper. You are very kind and generous. <laughs> uh, I think that, uh, so how could we salvage this paper? Um, uh, well, it didn't include all the potential challenges. Uh, I think I'm willing, I, I put down reject, but however, I'm willing if, if, if the authors could actually do, um, yeah, let me, um, let me sit down here. Let me, um, yeah, let me show you this. All those you things. have a great weekend too. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. You Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you. See you later. Bye. 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 Thank you.